Well, I greet you in the blessed Holy Ghost. I'm Brother Dwayne, and welcome to another thrilling episode of The Cry for America. We are brought to you by the Shekinah Family Worship Center, where Pastor Fields is our leader. We can be reached on the phone at area code 313-300-6457, or find us online under The Cry for America. We're on Facebook, Rumble, YouTube, and the Podbean Podcast. Please subscribe to our channel, leave a like, a comment, a thumbs up, share it across your platforms, helping our channel to grow and allowing this word to go forth as we are documenting God's servant, Apostle Cloud. She is ministering here in Detroit, December 19th of 2022, ministering on the whole armor of God, what it means to be clothed in the armor of God. Let's go now to Apostle Cloud. I didn't read it all, so I need to complete that and then open it up to another realm. So I will leave you in trouble. <laughs> I will have to leave you occupied because this this battle never ceases. Amen. Where we are coming to, it never ceases. Amen. Constant battle Jesus. from the north, from the south, from the east, from the west. Amen. It's always battling. Amen. But blessed is the man yes. that is God controlled. That is God controlled. Because that man will always be able to face the, the sword of the enemy from all angles, unmoved, unperturbed, undisturbed, always calm in the spirit. You're going to find out that those, those who are students of God calling, because not everybody is a student of God calling. You all don't read by once every blue moon. <laughs> you all don't care about reading. But if you like what you hear from my being, I'm telling you the source. Because that's where God started me, told me, these women, right, I raised them up and committed those messages in that book to them yes, amen. and so everything I taught them you must also work it yes. work it out and one of the first thing that the Lord pressed on me right to really make sure that my inner life is like what it is said in that book calm regardless of what the outward circumstances you know are you see this is the sign of victory when them devils can roar from the, from the exterior, but can never penetrate your inner shield of peace. Oh, you miss a good place to say amen. Some, some, some believers are always troubled. They're always troubled. The least demon that comes about, oh, they are lying on their back, crying, hi, 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 hi. <laughs> Help, help, help. Why? Uh, the devil came to my house. So what did you do? Well, what happened to your Holy Ghost? Ah, uh, Pastor, my Holy Ghost don't work. <laughs> your Holy Ghost don't work. <laughs> he said, my Holy Ghost don't work. So what have you been doing, doing in church? Yeah, just going in church. <laughs> Pastor, you know, I love the barbecue dinners, the dinners that you all make and you call all the believers. That's what I come to church for. <laughs> come to church to come and have a good time in barbecue dinners. But when they call the Holy Ghost prayer meeting, I don't go. <laughs> oh, blessed be the Lord. Okay, let me, let me go this place with you because I opened to my Bible and then there it was. I said, well, let me follow the Holy Ghost. 
Ephesians chapter 6. I'm going to follow that place. And then I will bring the William Barclay. And I will bring the scriptures to make it whole. Ephesians chapter 6. I don't know what that, what that you are see. Don't tell me you know Bible if you can't see the unfolding of the Spirit of God in the book of the Bible. If you don't see how the Spirit of God moves in the being of the Apostle. So that he wrote it the way he wrote it. He wrote it the way he, the Spirit of God crafted it. You see that there is a movement in, the, in, a, in Ephesians. Then it comes to chapter 6. Right? From chapter 1 all the way to chapter, the end of, the end of chapter 3 and the beginning of chapter 4. Chapter 4 verse 17. Mm -hmm. Right? You see that he unfolds the everlasting plan of God. The, the eternal purposes of God that in, in the end he will, he will assemble, you know, you know, gather together everything, heaven and earth in Christ. Okay, that's the divine purpose. Everything will be gathered in Christ. Right? And then, and then he, he goes on, you know, to develop in chapter 2, you know, how we too, in Christ Jesus, we are seated in the heavenly places with him. Yes. Okay, that's a position, a spiritual position. But for a lot of people, that's what it is. It remains a spiritual position without any reality in their being. You have been given a jacket, and the jacket always hangs in your closet. But you, but, but, but you, never, you, you never wear the jacket. See that? The jacket always hangs in your closet, but you never wear it. Or go look at it. That's what it is. You've been given a position in Christ. In the heavenly places, we are seated right in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. It's not just a word that they say. It's a reality. It's a spiritual position that only your spirit can rise up to. Not your physical body. Your spirit rises up to that position. That's where authority comes from. Authority is not something that we command here on earth. Authority is, is, a, is a reality in our being. Amen. Okay? We have to have this character of Christ developing us. And we are one with him. Yes. Amen. See, the Lord has been uh, uh, saying, be one with me. Seek to be one with me. I'm not asking you to just go to church. I say, walk with me, get to know me, abide in me, seek my face, so you can be one with me. Amen. Now, last night we talked, we saw what, what, uh, how wonderful it is to be one with God, mm -hmm. right? He said, be one with me. All right, that you are, you are, I didn't call you just to go to church. I called you so that you will, by my spirit, rise and follow me. By my spirit, mm -hmm. as many as are led, yes, as many as are led by my spirit, mm -hmm. they are the sons of God. Yes. Yes. He never said as many as you know, go to church. No. There are many in church that, that, that I don't know where they are going. Come on now. Yeah. But they just go. But no reality in their being. The Spirit of God doesn't dwell in them with all the glory and power and majesty of Christ in their being. Yes. And yet this life is one of the most amazing lives that you could ever encounter. Mm -hmm. This Christian life that we don't know nothing about. Mm -hmm. One of the most amazing. What, what, what kind of life is this? What glorious life is this? A life of victory yes. Amen. over demonic forces. Over evil powers. Yeah. And it is in Christ Jesus, not in church. In Christ Jesus, we are able to walk in that realm. Amen. Okay? Because remember, the Beatitudes leads us all the way to the, to the, to what, to the bliss of the, of the blood-stained pathway. <laughs> Blessed are you when men revile you. And they speak all, all manner of evil against you falsely. For my name's sake. 
when they come against you, persecute you. Brother, we are going to find out why there is persecution. It has to be. Because if I were a devil, that's what I would do. <laughs> if I were a devil, that's what exactly I would do like they are doing. I ain't going to let you go to heaven. I'm going to frustrate you. I'm going to come against you. I'm going to make sure you don't, you don't have any success. I'm going to make sure you can't work with Jesus. But we don't see that. So the devil is having a heyday in churches. Heyday. Having a good time. Bombarding ministers' minds. You know, you know making ministers you know, frustrated. You don't know what to do no more. The end time is a mess. The end time is a mess. Demonic mess. <laughs> Spiritual mess. Because all kinds of demonic forces are let loose to stop the believer. To make sure you don't make it. You see, that's why I say, if I were a devil, I would do the devil's work. I would do exactly like he's doing. I'm going to let you, I, I won't let you go to heaven. You think I'm crazy? You ain't going to heaven. I'll make sure you come to my place and burn, and burn, burn, burn with me. Come and burn with me, eating the barbecue with me. Ooh, in the Holy Ghost. Yes, God. Who are, who are all right? All right. Yes, God. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Where is, where, where is Pastor Charles? Amina. Uh, oh, uh, a wall. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay, look at. You see, from chapter four, uh, when we finish with the purposes of God, and come to chapter two and chapter three, the riches. Okay, that uh, that that's, that the apostle Paul is mandated uh, of of Christ, all right, to preach and, pro, you know, and proclaim to the believers the riches of Christ, the unsearchable riches. And then chapter four, you know, comes and tells you, listen. Uh, therefore, you know, I'm urging you because of what what this life is all about. You should no longer walk as the Gentiles walk. No longer. No longer walk in the darkness of your minds and in your, in the perversity and the uncleanness. Mm -hmm. Don't do that. Because this is not how we learned Christ. No. You see that? This is not how we learned Christ. Mm -hmm. Right? And he, he, he continues to you know, talk about the Christian love, the problems. And then he comes to chapter 6. Right? Now, verse 10, because try and see there is a movement in this book, Ephesians. And the movements leads you to a fight. Okay? Everything that Paul has, has revealed that belongs to us, the life we should live, you know, chapter 4, not to live like them devils, and like chapter 5, about marriage, relationships, you know, and the father and parents, relationship, it's all in Ephesians. Right? All of it takes place before the battle. Okay, it takes place, he tells you how to live, how to walk, God's purposes, everything. Why? It takes you to a battle. In the end, you have to fight. Yes. All right? And so he said, finally, verse 10, chapter 6, verse 10. You hear that? Chapter 6, verse 10, Ephesians. Mm -hmm. Finally, ooh, that, 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 that's, the, that's the King James. King James says, finally. Amplify said, in conclusion. In conclusion. Yes, you see, finally. So finally means this. This is what concludes what I've been saying. Yes. Right? I've been telling you something. I've been telling you the developing God's purposes. We're developing, you know, the, the life, you know, the life we should live. Don't, don't follow the life of the Gentile. You are Gentile, but now you are part of the, uh, of the commonwealth, you know, you know, you know uh, of Christ, of the citizenship, you know, in heaven. He, he's been telling us all these things. And then finally, he says, hey, hey, all right, what I've told you, 
This is the conclusion. All I have said, this is what I'm bringing you to. <laughs> All right. Because there is a devil. You have to confront. If you don't fight, he don't care, he will fight. You see that? If you don't fight, the devil will fight. He will fight you anyway. But yeah, the devil don't mind you going to church. As long as you don't know Jesus, he will let you go to church. How many times does the devil come to, to, to the house of God? He brings the people. He says, okay, I'm going to show you your pastor I don't know nothing. <laughs> no, <laughs> your, your pastor don't see me. I'm going to come take you. I hold, I hold your neck. I put my chains around you. <laughs> I bring you in the house of God. You say, sit here. You sit down there. And I sit beside you. The devil sits beside you know, the, what, the slaves of the devil. Yeah. Then they, they, are, they are preaching the word. See, you see, you be whispering to you. See, I, I tell your, your pastor, he don't see me. Your pastor, he blind. You know, he can't, he can't cast me out. I'm right here. <laughs> Woo! I mean, your pastor is blind. He don't see me. You see, but if you are in the spirit of God, the Holy Ghost will move in your being to direct you to speak a word of authority. And them devils know authority. They know they have to let go of the slaves they are holding. That is why the, the, the most dangerous place for the devil is a living Christ church. A church who dies alive, them devils don't want to come there. But the church that the blood is, is, is testifying, a church where the blood of Jesus Christ is honored, them devils ain't come there. But they will, they will go to dead churches. <laughs> it's a word what? Where the dead body is. Where the what? The, 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 yeah, the corpses. Where, yeah, where them, them birds gather, right? Them ravens. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the vultures. They got, you, you, know, you don't know vulture? It's like the example, the image of the devil, vulture. He loves that stuff. That's why he congregates. The, the devil's church is full of corpses. Dead bodies, and he don't give them life. See, he gathers them and kills them. But I'm saying there is a fight. Amen. Remember what we see, well, what we saw yesterday. Yes. But about the, the the seventh and eighth beatitude. Okay. Now let's look at. It's a finally. In other words, before I'm coming to the end, all I have said, I've developed all my points. This is the last one. But the last one will determine your victory. Your last one will see whether you're going to stand, whether you're going to fight, whether you're going to get the victory, or you're going to you know, lie down there and crying, help, help, help. So finally, my brethren, say in conclusion, the Amplified said, be strong in the law. He didn't say, just go to church. Be is a command. He didn't say be weak. Amen. He didn't say be filled with the barbecues. No, you go to some churches, they, they serve pizza. Friday night pizza. Yeah. So that they can get all the students in there. They come and eat pizza and then sleep and play basketball. You crazy, man. <laughs> what? You gather the kids who are in need and you just entertain them with pizza. And then they go home. May God help us. We must teach our young people. Teach them. Raise them up as soldiers. To fight for their lives. Amen. The devil don't care whether, whether you are a child or not. He don't care. When he gets you, he will, he will do you. Says here, in conclusion, be strong in the Lord. Be empowered. Amplify. Be empowered through your union with him. Through your what? Your church going? Huh? Through your church attendances? See, I do that because I want to undermine the falsehood. 
Uh, that has been used to deceive people. Mm. Oh, just come to church. Just come to church and sing some song. Mm. That's all we come. Uh, what, what's her name, Sister Sister, sister Sherry, was, uh, when I came, you were saying something. Uh, when I read something. You think I get read with my mouth? Oh, no. I don't read the word of God with my mouth. I read from the being. I read from the depths of my being. Are you hearing me now? But yes. that's where authority to reinforce the word comes from. Yes. The written word is written word. It needs fire. You must put fire in your reading. Fire comes from the being. Without fire, the word don't permeate and penetrate your heart and expose your lying and no stuff. All the lies and deceptions of the devil. We got to expose them. So he who will help the younger generation is the one that is alive with Christ. That is alive in Christ. And it's a, it's a, it's a slave of Christ. That's it. A born servant of Jesus Christ. That's all he cares about. You know why? You no, know, the time is coming. You, 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 you said, ah, this crazy guy, he told us. But we didn't mind him. <laughs> The time is coming you flee from the world. Mm -hmm. You flee and come to Jesus. Because yes. he alone can keep you. Mm -hmm. The time is coming you, you see the world would get hold of your heart and drag you into, into, into the filth of the world. And unless Jesus shows you mercy, that's it. Mm -hmm. You can never come back. Many believers are going down to the drain. Why? Because all they do is they go to church, sing in the choir, teach Sunday school, and that's all. They are in their life, nothing happens. Mm, yeah. The beauty of the, what, what the Holy Ghost, they don't know. Mm. The righteousness of God, it don't control their life. Mm. The peace of God, it don't dwell there. Mm. The love of Jesus, they don't know. So what do you know? Mm. What do you know? Oh, what do you have? You don't have love, you don't have joy, you don't have peace, you don't have strength, you don't have wisdom, understanding. So then you tell me you are going to heaven. Mm. Who's heaven? Mm. Which heaven are you going to? Mm. You see, we should wake up and read the word of God for ourselves. Mm. Yes. Right? Read the word of God for ourselves. Yes. You don't read it by the Holy Ghost, you are just going to read it any way you want to. It will not benefit you. The word of God is life. Yeah. The word of God is love. Yeah. The word of God is joy. <laughs> Woo! Peter, ah, yeah, Peter said, even though we ain't seen him. Have you seen Jesus? We ain't seen him. And yet Jesus, Peter said, when we believe on him, we got joy unspeakable. And full of glory on the inside. Ain't seen the guy. I ain't seen him, but I believe. Yes, yes. I believe. Yes. By faith, Lord. I know Jesus. Yes. By faith, he reveals himself in my being. Yes. Christ wants to reveal himself in your being. Yes. Not in church, in your being. Yes. Are you not the church? Yes. Are you not the temple of the Holy Ghost? Yes. So where will Jesus Christ reveal himself? In the in, in building? No. <laughs> he said, for, he says here, in conclusion, be strong in the Lord. Mm -hmm. Be empowered through your union with him. Yes. Draw, I said, guys, draw your strength from him. Yes. That strength, which is boundless, yes. <laughs> His boundless might provides. Wow. Whoa. That strength which his boundless might provides. Put on. You hear that? There's something to put on. An attire to put on. Invisible attire to put on. Is the word of God become, become clothing. The word of God become your dress. <laughs> Put
put on God's whole armor. The Uzima light. Uh, anytime I read this thing, just it just make, make me happy. The armor, the as you go, <laughs> the armor, the whole armor, the armor of a heavy armed soldier. <laughs> oh, I mean, uh, you didn't say the armor of a church goer. Oh no, or of a Sunday school teacher. The arm <laughs> of a, a heavy arm soldier, which who the devil supplies, which God supplies, God, and, and you come to God, did He supply you with that? Because the, this one you don't get it until you are in, in, uh, in what? In, or, uh, or, or how do I show it? You 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 are seeped in the word of God until the word of God fills your being, yes. and therefore you begin to have an understanding of what these armor pieces are. It's an armor of the word of God. The pieces of the word of God. We're going to see. He says, put on God's whole armor. Says, so that you may be able successfully to stand. Stand up against. So it's a fight. Stand up against all the strategies. And the deceits of what? Is it a warfare? Amen. The other guy, he got his strategies. Mm -hmm. He got some deceit. Mm -hmm. How he going to lie to you. Mm -hmm. like, like how he lied to our grandfather Adam and Eve. On, the ain't change. On, has God, has God said. Come on, tell it. Yeah, yeah. Has, has God said it. <laughs> God, God knows. That when you eat of that tree, your eyes are going to hope you're going to be wise. <laughs> the devil, that, that, that double, double tongue devil, his tongue is fucked. You know that you know every serpent's tongue is fucked. <laughs> so he can't say, he, he, he can't pronounce some words. <laughs> he says that. Uh, God knows that when you eat of that tree, you'll be wise. Wise. <laughs> they said, that, that what's the meaning? Wise. Your eyes will open. Oh, that is wise. Yeah. You'll be wise. And God don't want you to know that. Ah, yeah. He said, when the woman saw, how did she see? You, see, you know, you woman, how you do? You, you draw near to examine closely what, what is that. <laughs> You go, you go near to go and you know, examine. They say it's, it's, it's poison. So I'm going to see. <laughs> Ooh, Amina! <laughs> the devil has a strategy. He plans how to approach you. He's go he even knows, you see. He knows the Bible more than most believers. This guy, he's a crooked man. And he's smart. The devil is smart. He will, he, he will outwit you if you don't watch it. Okay? That is why we have a fight. And it's a fight okay, that the word of God has to guide us into. When the devil attacked Jesus in the wilderness, he didn't tell him, all right, devil, all right, I know it's you. Okay, hold, hold on, don't go nowhere, hold on. I'm going to find my Bible first. Okay, devil, don't go nowhere. Where's my Bible? Where's my Bible? <laughs> you are already defeated. The devil has attacked you. You are going to look for your Bible? The Bible ought to have been inside. The Bible ought to have had a place in your being. Most people, do I don't know what Bible they can quote. How, how many Bible verses you can quote? 
How many of the Psalms you know you can quote? How many? <laughs> <laughs> How many verses can you quote offhand? <laughs> but you see, if you are going to fight, the word of God is your main weapon. The word of God. But the word of God is not just the written word. The word of God is the living word. Amen. Christ is the living word. Yes. The spirit of God is the living word. The spirit and the word are the same. Yes. The spirit and the word are the same. Amen. The spirit is called the spirit of truth. The word of God is called the word of truth. Amen. Amen. And it is by the word of truth that we fight. Amen. That we defend ourselves. That we live the life that is approved of God. Because this, this, this armor is nothing but a lifestyle. A lifestyle. Okay? Let's, let's, I may not go through it all because I have to. But I want to just set, <clears throat> let you understand that there's a fight. If you are, we are going to, you know, we are going to you know, stand for Jesus, there's a fight. It, it might, it, it might, you know, the devil, you know, you know, when he throws his arrows, some can get to you. Some can, pen <laughs> some can, you know, penetrate your armor. Because if they are, you, are, you are supposed to hold it this way, and then you hold it that way. <laughs> when you are holding your shield this way, okay, and the devil, you know, all right, all right hey, guys, you know, you see how he makes his, his shield or uh, you go under and then put it down here, put the your sword in. Wow. <laughs> you know what I mean? Huh? <laughs> you are not dealing with you are just just uh, uh, no, uh, somebody who is just you know you know uh, 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 ignorant. Amen. The devil is not ignorant. Amen. Okay? Amen. Uh, he 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 he's smart. Yes, he Anybody who fights God. <laughs> You know, we, we, we saw the battle that took place or what, you know, in heaven. You know, I, I, I share it, you know, uh, uh, some spot you know, about it. The battle that took place in heaven by which Satan was cast down. It was a fierce battle. A fierce battle. This guy was determined. He ain't got not somebody who can, who can command one third of angels behind him. Get a third of angels to follow him. He, he must be somebody. Only Christ could have come down here to defeat him. Only the creator himself could have taken on the devil and dismantled his works. And who do we have in our being? The guy who destroyed the devil. Yes. Oh yeah, it is him. It is him living inside. Yes. Oh, you all you don't, you all don't talk like you. <laughs> you all don't talk like you. You understand what I'm? I mean, our Creator God yes. came down here all by Himself to engage that demon crooked man, mm -hmm. to engage him. Okay, okay, deceive him. Mm -hmm. What did they say? If the, if the princes of this world had known, they would not have touched him. They wouldn't have touched Jesus. Ah, yeah, but they were baited to touch him. <laughs> because the battle was not here on earth. He came, yes, he lived the life, yes, he conquered on earth, yes. But the real battle was down in the pit of hell. Down in the pit of the underworld. That's why, that's why they had to kill him. He baited them to kill him. Because if he ain't died, he ain't going there. Mm -hmm. wow. if, he, if he doesn't, they don't kill him. He, but he can't descend down there. Right. He won't go there. Yeah. Because they killed him. Yeah. He had a right to go to their throne room. He went there. Encountered them. And that's where he took them keys from him. Yeah. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's where he took them keys from him. He said, Behold, I am he that liveth. I am he that liveth and was dead. 
and behold, I'm alive. I'm alive. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Your God is alive. So he is the one, the God we're talking about is the one that sent his son and he was in his son and sent his son to go down there. Son, when you go down there, go get me the keys. He gave some keys to Adam, some authority keys. <laughs> and Adam being so, 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 so stupid, just let the devil deceive him and take the keys. Because to whom you yield yourself, right, servant to obey, you are his, you are his servant to whom you obey. Adam became the servant of the devil because he obeyed the devil. What God gave him, he gave over to the new master. Jesus knew it. And so he came as a man to go down there. Ah, devil, I ain't come to, I ain't come to bind you. But when my father and I, when we made the man, we gave him authority, some keys. And you lying devil, you took the keys from him. All right, so now give me them keys. Yeah. That's why I came. Mm. Give me them keys. Devil is Oh, what a sight. <laughs> them devil is looking at him saying, what, 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 what did you say? <laughs> give me them keys. That's all I want. The, 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 the what? <laughs> Give me the key, Satan. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where is it? Uh, it's, it's right here in my pocket. All right, give it to me. <laughs> Woo! It's okay. That's why I came here. Your time is coming. I'm, I will come back again, come and bind you and put you in that, in that, in that lake of fire. You, you hold on. Don't worry. You think you think you I'll let you go free? Oh no, there's judgment day coming. That's right. Amen. Amen. So he rose from the dead with them keys. Yeah. And said, Behold, all right, I am the one who who died, and I'm alive again now. Amen. I got the keys. Yeah. All right? So he said, Go into all the world. All right? Go into all the world and preach my gospel. Yeah. So behold, all power in heaven is given unto me. All power in heaven and earth is mine. Okay. Go therefore in my name. Okay. And go and make disciples of all nations. But teaching them to obey everything. Everything I taught you. I commanded you. And behold. I am. I am. It's with you. You didn't hear that? I am with you. Means I am. It's with you. The name of God is I am. Amen. So he said, behold, I am with you. Yes. All right? But behold, I am is with you. Yeah, yeah. So go in my name. Yeah. Cast out them devils. Yeah. Heal the sick. Yeah. Are you hearing me now? Amen. So the fight is to go and fight and deliver those who are bound. Okay? Depopulate hell so you can fill heaven. There are multitudes descending to the pit of destruction who stand in the way and say, no more. Go back in Jesus' name. Amen. Who has that authority now? All we do is go to church, sing in the choir. We ain't stopping nobody from going to hell. But we are in church. If some of your members in, in your churches are still going to hell, and you don't even see that they are going to hell, you eat barbecue dinners with them, but they are going to hell. Ain't that something? You eat pizza with them, but they are going to hell. When will you rise up and wake up and know that you have authority? Jesus gave you power. Behold, I give you power over all the power of the enemy to tread over serpents and scorpions, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Oh, yes, God. So he said here, put on the whole armor of God, the armor of a heavy armed soldier, which God supplies, that you may be able to successfully stand up against all the strategies and the deceits of the devil. For we are not wrestling 
no, no, no. I, I, I like the King James Version. He said, that, this one. He said, for we wrestle not. So he said, we ain't fighting. <laughs> we wrestle not. Yes, sir. See, by, by you can read it properly. We wrestle not against. Yes. You see, by some churches, the way they have put their design there, he said, we don't fight. <laughs> but if a church don't fight, what happens in the, in the house of God? Darkness. Them devils take over. Because you say you don't fight. Your sign boy said, we wrestle not. Hey, you saw that? This, oh, yeah, come on, come on. They're here, they don't fight. <laughs> they don't fight. Do you see that? They don't fight. So let's go there. They come in, there ain't no prayer meeting, ain't no fasting, ain't no word. Yeah, I told you, they don't fight. They come in there and then come and destroy all of you. Bind all of you. Make you slaves. How long would the people of God not sleep and not wake up and realize that there's a battle to fight? Says here, for we, we are not wrestling with flesh and blood, contending only with physical opponents, but against despotisms, against... Ah, he said, the first time, it's been many, many years I've been, I've been reading this. 46 years now I've been walking in this realm. Brother, I ain't, he ain't be funny. He ain't, he ain't be very like, well, easy now. You have to concentrate on Christ. You have to follow Christ in your being, by the word, in prayer, in fasting, in the Holy Ghost. All the days of your life, you have to follow Christ. You want to go to heaven? Follow Jesus. I didn't say just go to church. Follow him. He that says, I know him, ought himself to do what? To walk or, or to go to church as he went to church. <laughs> oh, yes, God. Right? So he says here, contending only with physical opponents, but against the despotism, against the powers, against the master spirits who are the world rulers of this present darkness. Against, you see, I, 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 I drew your attention some time ago Lord, to this, because when I, when I first time read the Greek, and I said, no, hold on. It repeats the against. Mm -hmm. Before each group of demonic forces, there is against. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you have to fight against all of them. Yeah. Amen. One by one, against this group, against this group, against the group. There are major, four major groups of demonic forces. Amen. You can't fight against one and leave the rest. That's why he repeats the against. Why did he say against, against despotisms and uh, powers and, and just list them? Why didn't he list all of them one after the other? Right? But he said against. Against. <laughs> I like that. Against. He, makes, he wants you to know that, brother, you must fight against all four of them. You must address your battle against all four of the demonic forces. You can't just, you know, just fight with a two-take demon. That's all you can fight. Two-take demons. <laughs> a demons that come to steal your pizza. <laughs> that way you know how to fight them. Go get your pizza back. <laughs> Woo! Demons that come to disrupt your barbecue dinners. Oh, you go, you go get them. <laughs> But the demons that come and afflict you, you don't know, you don't know what to do. They come to steal your children and, and afflict your children, you don't know what to do. Demons that come to fight against your marriage, you don't know what to do. But don't let them come to your barbecue demon, you know what to do. <laughs> Ooh, my Lord. Brother, he said, we are not wrestling with human beings, flesh and blood is human beings. The battle is not against your brother. No, yes, the battle is not against your sister. No. 
It's against that demon spirit behind. The demonic spirit. There are some people. Now listen to me. He says here, <clears throat> there is a, what, a, a, a spirit of what, disobedience, a, a spirit of rebellion that lives, works in the sense of disobedience. Every human being who is not born again, he got demon inside them. And even many believers, listen, this, this, this ain't fun. In your emotional realm, Amen. demons are oppressing you emotionally. Okay, not fighting against your mortal bodies, attacking you. You don't know how to defend yourself. So, brethren, he tells us how to be clothed. He tells us how to put your helmet on. There's a helmet of righteousness. Uh, I'm not going to go into the pastor fish who teach that. But he said here, contending only with physical opponents. But against despotisms, against the powers, against the master spirits, who are the world rulers? You see the mess in this world? You see the mess in this nation? There are spirit forces behind this hell that this nation is going through. It is not natural. It is demonic powers ganging up to destroy this nation. The master spirits who are the world rulers of this present darkness against the spirit forces of wickedness in the heavenly supernatural sphere. In the heaven about those who have been taken by the Lord, all right, to go, you know, go to heaven and go and visit hell. They have encountered, you know, demonic powers in the heavenlies. They fight them. So there are the angels come to take them to go. He so said there is, there is a realm there that them demons are waiting. They are not going to allow anyone to cross that realm and go towards heaven. They fight. They guard that place. So the angels, so one time uh, someone was testifying, so when the angels came, you know, came for him, there are two mighty angels came for him. And one had to, because so they came to that realm, that region. One had to cover him with his wings. So he braced him up <clears throat> with his wings. And then the, the, the first, the lead angel, just, just pierced through with a tremendous force and speed. And they whisked him through that realm. And, and they went through. There are demonic forces. Maybe, maybe the Lord will let you see that. One day he'll show you mercy, come take you to go show you heaven. <laughs> But walk with the Lord, okay? These things, these things, you know, are, you know, God chooses what you want to do with his children. You walk with him. You walk with him. And the Lord is able to sh go and show you something. Or reveal, you know, reveal things to you. All right? But there are master spirits who are the world rulers of this uh, present darkness and against the spirit forces of wickedness in the heavenly supernatural sphere. Therefore, put on, put on half of your armor tomorrow, and then a year later, put another half on, <laughs> and leave your shoe until. Oh, you don't say that. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, okay, my. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. You said that. Oh, all right, all right. All right. So he says, that, therefore, put on God's complete armor. That's right. Amen. That you may be able to resist and stand your ground on the evil day. The evil day of danger. And having done all that the crisis demands, stand. After you face them devil tote, he said, one time the Lord, you know, as he comes to visit, he told us, he said, listen, we are coming to the, to the place where I'm going to let you know that you have to stand toe to toe with them devils in fight and drive them away. So you are going to have to engage them. Toe to toe. So he said, tie everything around you. 
around your waist and be men who know the purposes of their God and then go after them and defeat them in my name. Amen. Defeat them devils in my name. Amen. Ah. ah, put on the whole armor and having done all the crisis demands to stand firmly in your place. Now, okay, he didn't, he didn't say having done all to fall down. Now, how do you say, uh, okay, supposing you fought, you fought your battery, you fought your battery, and when the Lord came, you were lying down there, he said, a victory, victory, you lying down, he said, victory. <laughs> your mouth is all messed up with blood. <laughs> you shout to victory. Huh? He said, after you've done everything, don't fall down. Stand as a man. Uh, there is a fight. Fight is a quit you like men, Paul says. Ah, stand therefore, not lie down therefore. Stand therefore, hold your ground. Having tightened the belt of truth around your loins. See, I, I, I like to linger and then open it up, but I can't. I want to go here. But brother, you know what that means? Truth. Truth must be your belt. Yeah. I got belt. I got belt right here. What does my belt do? It keep my shirt, my t-shirt, my under everything in place. Mm -hmm. he, ain't, he ain't coming down. So truth must hold your whole life yeah. in place. You don't crumble. You don't make a false step into some, into some, some ditch. Truth keeps you alert, ready, tie it around. You see, when I, I, I have my pants and everything tied on, I can move fast. I can, I can, I can even jump, all right? My belt you know, holds me in place, holds all my, you know, my clothes in place. So I'm asking you, do you have a belt? Yes. Do you know the belt as, uh, as truth? Ah. It's your spirit garments tied together with the belt of God's truth. Holding your spiritual life together. Amen. Amen. Ah, because if, if you don't have truth to guide you, hold you together, bro, you'll be deceived. Amen. The enemy can easily be, uh, deceive you. Because this battle is truth against lies and deception. It is truth, the true and then the evil one. The true one, the true God and the evil one. That's the fight. And, and for what? For the control of man. That's the battle. Who will control man? So man, man is the pawn. God wants man because he made man his image. The devil said, no, I need him to be my servant. So the battle is between the evil one and God for the control of man's life. If you don't know it, you ain't going to do what, you, what you're supposed to do. You are supposed to be on God. You're supposed to get the truth and live the truth. Live the truth. Don't just go to church. Live the truth. Don't lie. I don't go and play you know, you know, in all kinds of you know, the works of the flesh. Get the works of the flesh out of your life. Yeah. Don't go there. Yeah. Let the Lord purge your whole life. Yes. Okay? Don't, don't play with fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, lies, and deception. And all. Don't play with it. Amen. You open the door of your soul to the devil. So he says here, put on the belt of truth. Stand therefore, hold your ground, having tightened the belt of truth around your loins, and having put on the breastplate of integrity, woo, and of moral rectitude, and right standing with God. The breastplate, it covers your hair. All your vital, all your vital in the places in your, in your body are protected spiritually. With the with the rectitude, moral rectitude, moral rightness, not uncleanness. 
Okay, not wickedness, but uprightness of heart, righteousness of heart, holiness, holiness unto the Lord. It's your, it's your breastplate of righteousness. It covers all your vitals in you know, areas. From here, it covers. And then, and then the shield will also co cover. Because say here, uh, having, okay, you just stand before, no, okay, let's say, having, having put on the breastplate of integrity and of moral rectitude, moral rightness, uprightness, okay, standing with God. All right, and they say here, and having shod your feet in preparation to face the enemy, toe to toe. Ooh, you're gonna fight, you're gonna face him as the Swahili says it. Uso kwa uso, face to face. You're gonna fight them devils. You see, now it didn't say we 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 stand that the devil like. Like, like, like Goliath, he stood on the mountain and David somewhere far away. So that's a gap. He didn't say that. He didn't say there will, there will be a gap between you and the devil. He said we are wrestling. And wrestling means close quarters. Close quarters, close engagement. Them devils ain't going to stay far away. They want to come and dwell in your body. They want to come and you know, put sicknesses, infirmities on you. So you better make sure that you engage the devil with the word of God and with your sword. Amen. It says here, uh, I'm, I'm not going to have time to go to that. Your, your feet must be shod with the, with the preparation of the gospel message. You must walk in it. You must stand in the message you preach. You must stand in the word you are giving to people. Stand in it and then engage the enemy. Stand, live the life. Amen. If you don't live the life, how can you get into battle with the enemy? Live the life. Stand in truth. Stand in righteousness. Have a, a, what? a moral conduct that pleases God. Ah, says here. Ah, yes, God. The readiness produced by the good news of the gospel of peace lift up over all the covering shield of saving faith ah yes god he <laughs> says he says here uh what take take the helmet of self no we are good above all king james says take the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench some of the fiery darts and others and others you cannot i just you just turn to the left let it pass and go <laughs> he said what i give you you'll be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked yeah. you will stop them right there as because you hold your you, you must know how to uh, how to let your faith defend you if you don't know how faith is the shield, you are in trouble. How does faith defend the man? How does faith help you to be a shield of protection? Let's say, you know, uh, the, the, the bailiff, okay, you live in, in Detroit. I was in Angstad, the bailiff, he said, hey, Dr. Kwa, I am the bailiff. If you don't pay your rent, I can't kick you out. <laughs> That was 1995 when we first moved to, 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 to Michigan. He told me, say, he's the bailiff. I said, I said, God. He said, no, no, don't tell me God, God. <laughs> he said, I've had, I've had to throw some pastors out. I said, I said, Lord, you heard him. <laughs> Lord, you heard what he said. So, Father, you make sure that the money, the supply comes so that this guy is in business. <laughs> But thank God, I, st I stayed there for 10 years, ain't nothing happened. The Lord took care of it. Yes. But let's say the bailiff, okay, is coming, has sent, he has sent you notice from the court that they, are, they should come and kick you out. And you are desperate, you ain't got no money, when you're this, but you say you're a servant of God, this and that and that, you've taken all the words. But now it is desperate time. 
you must show that your God works, that your God will help you. All right? Now, all of a sudden, a friend came. A friend from nowhere just showed up. He said, now what's going on? I said, brother, ah, there's something go going on here. I'm about to be kicked out, you know, and I'm looking to God and all that and all that. So don't worry, tomorrow I will come and take care of it for you. Hey. Listen to what he says. Your friend says tomorrow he will come and take care of you. And you know that friend well. Mm -hmm. You know he don't lie. Mm -hmm. How will you feel? Will you feel good? Yeah. Oh, will you feel good, right? Oh, you, you, you feel good, brother. You, you, you breathe a sigh of relief. Why? Because you trust your friend. Amen. You trust him. Yes. That is how faith protects you from, from disintegrating. Yes. Because when the word of faith came, you believed it. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Because tomorrow, and you can even go to the bailiff. Bailiff, okay, tomorrow I'm, I'm coming to pay. Don't worry. All right, I'm waiting. <laughs> But you go to the bailiff and in the Holy Ghost, in the, what are you talking about? They're in the Holy Ghost. So, all right, tomorrow I'll be waiting for, for, for what you say. If you don't come, come to kick you up. But the word of faith as a shield, that's how it, it's a promise of God. Yeah. The promise of God that God is true and faithful is what protects us. Mm -hmm. It's a shield. Yeah. Wherever there is faith, there is peace. Yeah. Where faith rules in the heart, there, that is what protects us. We don't have no shield in a physical, shield, no, no visible shield. It's an invisible shield that is in the being. Your heart rises and takes hold of the word of promise. And there you stand in the word of faith. Confidence in God. That's your protection. Ain't no visible shield. It's an invisible shield of faith. And ah, uh, your heart believes God. That's what I'm telling you. You must know God. You must believe his promise. You must walk close to him. You must not just be going to church. You must have time to seek the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. They that wait, 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 wait upon the Lord shall be like what? Ah, uh, they shall renew their strength. They shall do what? And then do what? Ah, uh, mount up. Mount Mount up. You hear me? But if you don't wait upon God, huh? if you don't wait upon God, will you be able to mount up? I say, if you don't wait upon God, will you be able to mount, mount up with wench? You, you don't even know you, you, you got some wench. Believers have wench in their spirit. I, I remember the Lord you know, talking to us about this very uh, well, no word. He said, he said, listen, you don't understand faith. He said, faith is the only power that God honors. God honors faith. Said, faith will rise and go before the heavenly throne and stand there. If you have faith, that's how it works. You release your faith to God, your faith ain't coming back, ain't coming back until it comes with, the, with, with what you ask God for. So faith is a very powerful thing. But you people don't want to walk in faith. Believe God. Develop it. Spend more time in the presence of God. All right? Spend time in the presence of God. So your faith will be strengthened. And the word of God will also strengthen your faith. So faith can go, so faith can go and stay by the throne of God. Just waiting. The Lord said, yeah, he comes. It comes faith, every faith, every living faith that is in the heart of my children. When they believe me, the faith rises and comes before me. And I can see that faith looking calmly, waiting for the answer to go back. <laughs> Why don't you develop this living faith? Living by faith in Jesus above. I'm fighting, I'm fighting in his great love. From all I'm saying, in shattering arms, I'm living by faith, and I feel no harm. You ain't, you ain't single like you believe it. You ain't single like you believe it. Living by faith in Jesus above. Trusting and confiding in his great love. 
from all harm. I'm safe yes, in his sheltering arms. <laughs> Woo! Brother. <laughs> oh, brother. There are times I just pity my brethren because they are churchgoers. It's not church, this is not church going. This is a relationship. A deep relationship of heart to heart, known, knowing your God. Ah, so the faith is the, is the, what, is the shield of faith, right? And having, okay, so, uh, lift up over all the covering shield of saving faith upon which you can quench all the flaming missiles of the wicked one and take the helmet of salvation. Helmet, what do you do with helmet? Protect your head. And what is in your head? Your brains. Your brain that directs your body. The brain that sends thoughts all over your body. Your brain, your brain is the guidance. It guides, it sends thoughts. But if your head ain't working, can you work? Can the rest of the body work? If the head is not there. So the helmet of salvation protects your thoughts, your thought life. So the devil who won't put poison in your, in your mind. Won't put lies and deception in your mind. And the devil will do that. He will plant secret thoughts in your... Don't you see how a lot of people, they, are, they, are, they have no control over their thought life. A lot of believers, their, their mind roams like a Roman cell phone. It roams everywhere. But you've got to have, uh, not have the ability to bring your thought back on God. And thou shalt keep him in perfect peace. Whose mind? That's why roam around. Roam, roam around like a, a Roman cell phone. Mind is stayed. stayed on him. Because what? Because he goes to church? Because he trusts in him. So let your mind teach your mind. I tell you, that's one of the greatest barriers any believer faces. Okay, to, to be able to get hold of your thought life and bring them submitted to Jesus Christ in the Holy Ghost. But you find out that Christ is after that. Now, I don't want to go into that, but I would have told you that when Adam was created, all right, all his powers, all his powers, thinking powers, emotional powers, you know, intellectual powers, physical powers, spiritual powers, all of them were centered in the Holy Spirit. Everything passed through the Holy Ghost. Adam had no independent life of God. No independent life. He had one mighty dependence on God. So every characteristic God gave him was expressed through the Holy Spirit. He didn't have self-life. The only life he had is Christ's life. Okay. But the moment, oh my goodness, what a tragedy. The moment he believed that lying, crooked devil, he lost it. He lost it because he became independent of God. Ah. Woo! Independent of your creator God. Who created you so he can, he can nurture you, take care of you, and you depend on him for everything you need. Now you declare your independence off of God to go and follow a crooked devil. So the moment he lost the Holy Ghost, that's it. There's no more no central power in his being. Get, 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 get this understanding. There's, there was no more central power. That which, that which controlled all his being was gone. So the spirit of God. The spirit of God ruled in Adam's being. But when he disobeyed, okay, there's this void. He realized he's his own God now. He's his own man. He lost it. Now, here, you know, you know what happened? The moment the Holy Ghost went away, the man said, well, ain't no sheriff here. So I'm going to think the way I want to think. There was a whole oh, mind. I, I, I'm, I'm the center. You ain't no center. Hey, we ain't got no more center. So okay, Mr. I'm going to do my own steps. So the will went here. And the emotions went here. 
and everything went. <laughs> Don't you understand the confusion in the very being of unsaved man? Don't you see it? Confusion, total chaos. Your spiritual power is dead. Ah, you have spirit, what, physical powers of your body now, not, nothing controls it. Okay? You have emotional power. It don't work. You have spiritual stuff, but no more master to control them. There you are. I mean, it's, a, it's, the, most, it's the most pathetic you know, sight, if you understand it. Man without God is helpless. Yeah. Helpless. Yeah. Oh, helpless. Yeah. A pawn in the hands of the devil. Okay? Because now, now let, let, let me say, why Jesus came? Why, why Jesus came and what he does? Because this, you see, knowledge of the scripture, okay, is the key to your success in the Christian world. Yeah. Knowing what took place and what happens, what the Lord is after when he saves you. When the Lord saves you, he forgives you your sin, Right? The, the, the stumbling block is your sin, your disobedience, your rebellion. So he comes and says, Lord, forgive me. All right. I'll forgive you. Okay? I'll cleanse you. I'll use my blood. I get down, I'll, I'll give you my life. I'll put my life within you. And then I'll give you my what? My Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. yes. Now, when Adam was born, who was the central power in his being? Was not the Holy Ghost? All right. So when Adam had not sinned, everything passed through the Holy Ghost. He expressed himself through the Spirit of God. Amen. That's all he knew. So now guess what has happened now? Jesus said, okay, I give you Holy Ghost. What's he going to do? He will be the master again. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Ooh, the Holy Ghost come. You will find out. All, everything that the Spirit of God will be doing in your being is to recapture the control he had over your being. <laughs> over your whole being, yes, your thinking will pass through the Holy Ghost. Your desires will have to be in the Holy Ghost. Set your affections on, on things above, no longer on things not, not down here. You see, your, your thinking powers will be in the Holy Ghost. Your intellectual powers, your physical power, everything will have to be harnessed again under the control of the Holy Ghost. Yes, Lord, yes. So that the Spirit of God now begins to rule in the being of man. Oh, my Lord. Now you will realize, my goodness, what a peace. What a peace comes to rule in the being. When man finally understands that he needs God, he needs the control of the Holy Spirit in his being. Ah, Holy Spirit and peace, Holy Spirit and love, Holy Spirit and joy, Holy Spirit and strength, Holy Spirit and holiness, Holy Spirit and wisdom, Holy Spirit and understanding. Everything is the Holy Ghost. So more and more as you walk with him, that's why you have to walk with him. That's why you have to seek him. That's why you have to read the word of God daily. Yeah. As you do that, the spirit of God, by the word of God, tries to form you. Form your heart again. Change your, your attitude. The things are put right. Your thinking has to be dealt with. Your desires will be dealt with. The loss of the flesh will be cast out. Every unclean thing will, you know, will have to you know, find a way out. Yeah. Until more and more your within becomes the being of your Lord Jesus Christ. Mm. Ah, mm. My Lord. See, I, thought, I thought that <clears throat> I, I was teaching for some time that my, my being, my, I want my being to be filled with the being of Christ. I don't know how I don't know how that thought you know, came to me, but I just knew it, that that's what I want. My inside will be so pure and clean, like I like cry. So I was desiring, I was looking for it, I was crying to God, Lord, lock my, make my inside clean and pure, so that my thoughts and my mind longer will be focused on You. I I sought that diligently. You, you, you didn't hear me. I didn't say I didn't say I went to church. Didn't I? Said, I sought that. I sought it. 
I shut the law for certain things that are in the word of God. I wanted to, to possess that wisdom that if a man has some, right, he's able to walk with God. I pray that prayer. Lord, give me the wisdom. Did you ever re read the, the book of Proverbs? Yes, sir. Did you read Proverbs chapter 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 8? Yes. Have you read about the wisdom yes. and the riches yes. that wisdom had? Yes. You ain't read that, you just go to church. <laughs> you see, they are things to be sought after. My son, if thou receive my word <laughs> and keep my words in thy being, if thou will incline your heart, and if thou will cry unto me, if thou will search me as silver or gold, if thou will lift up thy voice and then cry unto me for wisdom, then, then thou shalt understand the fear of the Lord. Then from there he said, for God gives wisdom. Out of his mouth cometh wisdom. And I ask people, where is the mouth of God in a believer? Where is the mouth of God in the child of God? It's not within. So he said, out of the mouth of God, wisdom shall come forth. You see, when you are walking with the Lord, monitor the heart. Thoughts and understanding will flow from his mouth oh, into your being, into your. <laughs> Ooh, oh, my Lord, my God. Lord, give me that wisdom, which if a man possesses, he is able to walk with you, he is able to understand your ways. Give it to me, Lord. Pour it into my being. Give me the knowledge. That makes me understand circumstances. But you all just, just go to church. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> uh, listen, uh, is it not written that, 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 that uh, in Christ lies the unsearchable riches? Yes. In Christ? Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, you believe that? In the treasures of, 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 of wisdom yes. and understanding yes. and knowledge, it's all lies you know, hidden in Christ. Yes. All right, where is Christ? Uh, uh, where, where is Christ? Well, where is, <laughs> is Christ inside you? Yes. Yeah, he's inside you. He, he, he lives inside you. So why are you not searching his being? Why are you not searching his being? Why are you not saying, Lord, open your being to me? Open the within of your being. In my being. So that my being will be like, like your being. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Woo! I mean as somebody out there. Oh, gee. Yes, God. Yes, God. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> Brethren. The, there's nothing sweeter than the word of God. Mm. Nothing that satisfies your, your lonely soul, your miserable soul, rather than the word of God. Mm. One time the Lord said, do, did you all know, do you all know that the soul don't eat your, your food, your natural food you eat? Your soul don't eat some. So the, the soul eats only one food. The word is what the soul wants. Amen. So you must give the soul the meal that he needs. Yes. You eat three, the three times barbecue dinner, three times. Don't you? Yeah, you morning, <laughs> morning, noon, and night barbecue dinner. And your soul ain't even eaten since Moses left Egypt. <laughs> Ah, it says here, and take the helmet of salvation, all right, the helmet of salvation to protect your thought life, okay? and the sword of the spirit, notice, the, the King James says, okay, and take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, okay, and in King James, those of you who have King James Bible, there is a colon, Colon is two dots. Mm -hmm. okay? if, if, if you, when you were school, you, you were taught colon and, and grammar and, and punctuation and you know, stuff. 
You didn't learn them? <laughs> so there's colon there. All right? Colon in the, in the English grammar simply tells you that what follows, all right, will amplify what I've said. Okay? What follows, colon, what follows, all right, will, will explain more, bring more light on the, on the preceding thoughts. All right? So he says here, uh, <clears throat> and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Okay? Okay, word of God. The sword of the spirit is the word of God. But here, the, 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 the next you know, verse in, in, in King James is, is what? Is the uh, highest one? 18. It's the participle, present participle. Praying. Praying. Right? Praying. Okay, praying. Okay, but the reason why it is this, because in Greek, the colon okay, was not there in Greek. The colon was had one, one word, it was replaced by one word. It's D I A, dia. In Greek, dia is by way of. Mm. By way of. Okay? And then if, 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 uh, even Latin. Latin by way of. So I'm going to Detroit by way of New York. Mm. I'm going to pass through New York and I'm going to Detroit. Okay? So he said, I'm going to take up the sword of the spirit mm. by way of praying the Holy Ghost. Praying the Holy Ghost. The word of God is put into action when the Holy Ghost, when you are in the Holy Ghost, when you are in the Holy Ghost, when you are Azagram Dagazagrambo Saram Mangazis, when you are in the Holy Ghost. You know why the Lord put us on that, on, on that schedule? He says, All I need for you to do is to read the word of God for two, three hours in the night. And then the rest of the night, blast the Holy Ghost. <laughs> the rest of the night, pray in the Spirit. Because he says when you pray in the Spirit, the Spirit of God is, is the Word of God in the Spirit. The Word of Truth, the written Word is called the Word of Truth. The Holy Ghost is the Spirit of Truth. So the Spirit and the Word are one. They do, they do the same work, but one in the spirit, one, one is natural, one is written. One is written, one is alive. Yeah. Living word and written word. Living and written, meet together, that right? explosion. So the spirit of God takes the word of God you have read to apply it to your being. And then apart from applying the word of God to your being, this one you are fighting devils. This passage, you are fighting devils. You are, you are dressing up as a soldier. Put on the whole armor of God. Not to sit down and go to church. You are dressing up so you can go and pursue them devils. I say you are dressing up. Put on your helmet. Put... <laughs> I got my helmet. <laughs> I got my helmet. I got my sword. I got everything else. <laughs> Now, okay, devil, where are thou? Now I'm, I'm, I'm ready now. Where is he? He's like, I'm not going to be there. 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 Let me tell you what is happening. Let me tell you what's happening. He says, when you take up the word of God, take it in the spirit. And pray with all kinds of prayer. Pray with all kinds of prayer and supplication. Not in English. And the, the, what? The, 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 the Greek says, and pneumate. Pneumate is in the spirit. It's not in English. You say, you don't, when you are dealing with devil, devils, you don't talk English. When you are dealing with devils, you don't talk English. You pursue them. They are spirit beings. Satan and his demonic spirits are spirit beings. You don't see them, but I thank God there's one who knows them. There's one who knows them. And God so krimda is karamdaga. And don't him nagaza krimdaga zinda. And don't dare him nagaza. You don't think the Holy Ghost knows what he's talking against them? 
You don't think when you get in the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God is not directing what, what he's saying against them devils. Spirit to spirit, brother. You don't know them devils, but the Holy Ghost sees them. The Holy Ghost knows where they are hiding. He knows they are hiding places. So you go in the spirit. Go in the spirit and pursue them. You ain't going to have no victory until you've learned how to fight in the spirit. <laughs> until you've learned how to fight it. We see, we f and then we fight in the spirit. Oh God, we fight in faith. How can you talk this weird language and you say you fight in devils? You see, that, that's the decision of the enemy. God, who gave you the language, he knows what he gave you. Yes. Did, did the Lord not give us a message here about the demolition gift? Azul. <laughs> Holy Ghost, the demolition gift. <laughs> it, <laughs> it demolishes. It tears down. It destroys the works of the devil. For this purpose, the Son of God was made manifest. That he might go to church and sing in the choir. <laughs> Why was the Son of God made manifest? Somebody knows. Yes, to destroy. You see that? To destroy the works of the devil. Do you believe it? Jesus Christ came, right? To destroy the works of the devil. So he says here, when you are praying against devils, who are the author, the authors of wickedness and perversion, yes. principalities and powers, and the spirits of wickedness in the heavenly place? These are wicked spirits. Yes. So when you are praying, you don't pray them in English. You pursue them in the Holy Ghost. Yes. Follow them devils. Yes. Oh, my Lord. You see, there will be, there'll be persecutions. Yes. But there's an answer. I said there will be persecutions. Yes, you will be persecuted. Because you, you know, because that's the game of the devil. Yes. As I told you, if I were the devil, I'll do the same thing. I'll persecute you. Yes, because I don't want you going to heaven. Yes, the devil will, 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 will be stupid if he sat down doing nothing. And we all pass him by going to heaven. Oh, and they say, oh, there they are going. Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, guys, they are going. We are leaving us alone. Oh no, he'll be stupid to sit down there and say they are living here alone. He goes, hey, why, why are you going? He said, do, do, you, do you remember the, the vision that God gave that man of God? That uh, uh, there were some people who were going, they had their Bibles, and they are, they are going, walking, and going to the, you know, and the barrier in the heavenly places. Okay, where, the, where, the, the, where those big demons you know, crossed the, the, well, the pathway, and were standing down there, there's a gate. When they arrived there, you know, they went there and said, hey, the demon, the huge demon, asked them, hey, where are you going? So we are going to, to heaven. He said, uh, what, 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 what tells you that you are, you are wanted there? He said, the Bible. He said, Bible? He said, give me your Bibles. He said, them demons examine the Bibles to see if you read them. My goodness. See, he said, so the Bible said, those people got their Bibles. And they give the Bible to them. He said, that, give the devil. The devil said, but the Bible you gave me, you, you gave it to me upside down. You ain't reading it. <laughs> he said, hey, what are, what are some of the pages he, he, he lost? He said, this is what they did. People who say they are believers don't read the word of God. They leave out places they don't want. Them demons will find you out. The Bible, the word of God said that, it said that them, them demons look through it. He said some of them, he said when them demons you know, took their Bible, they saw, yeah, the director, yeah, they couldn't say nothing. So, okay, you are allowed to go. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> them devils say go. Because he can't say nothing about the Bible. You read it, your life shows that you read the Bible, the demon didn't find no fault against you. He opened the door for you to go. But those who were uh, stopped by the devil, right there behind the gate was a deep pit they fell in. They fell into the pit, down to the pit of destruction. Keep on. Keep on just going to church, not read your Bible. <laughs>
keep on going to church don't read your bible okay so <laughs> Ooh, spend time with the word of god brother read it from genesis to revelation Amen. don't leave nothing out Amen. don't leave nothing i see it, it is the people who say it is the old testament so they don't read it oh. All right, well, okay the prophets are they living in the old testament were they in the old testament the prophets the prophets were in the old testament right yeah. oh yeah they were in the old yeah. but the word they said is it not out of that came the new testament yeah. that's right <laughs> what the prophet said is still of use today Amen. what Jeremiah said what Ezekiel said what Isaiah said what all of them said is still in play today Amen. only only in the Old Testament now we don't go and bring sheep and bulls to give to God Amen. we don't give no bull we don't give no sheep we don't bring bring no dog no no cow to God because our lamb has come the lamb of God the only lamb that makes us free to go to God has been shed. His blood has come. So that's our lamb. That's our sacrifice. Christ Jesus is our sacrifice. We don't need no cow, no goat, no moon, no bear, no nothing. None of those things. So that, that part of the old, 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 old covenant is gone. But the prophets are still talking. Elijah is still talking. <laughs> Did Elijah not come? And Moses not come to meet Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration. Amen. So, but yes, keep on. Don't bring no, no sacrifice, no bull to God. Mm -hmm. That one, that one is out, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> no, pigeons. no pigeons, no nothing, no. right? Christ is our all. Yeah. Christ is our all. He's our sacrificial lamb. Yeah. Hallelujah! Yeah. Yes, God. Yeah. Yes, God. So, brethren. When you are fighting devils, he says here, Ephesians chapter, chapter 6, all right. All right. He says here, pray at all times, verse, verse, verse 6, uh, 18, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. In the spirit means in the Holy Ghost, in tongues. You are given a spirit language. Praying in the Holy Ghost, that's what's praying in the spirit is. There are times you can talk English and you feel Holy Ghost. All right, God, God, God gave you that too. You can talk in you know, English to God. But in tongues, you are talking mysteries. Areas your English language can go. You hear me now? Areas your English language cannot, cannot express itself. All right, all right, okay. Let's see. All right, I have a 24 enough you know, family let, 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 let's say my family is about 24 we, we are about nine we're we are about 13 and then four passed away but the nine of us are you know and the eight eight of us are still there all right so i'm praying okay god uh, uh bless me and uh save my sister save my brother save my this save 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 save, save my cat take my dog <laughs> and then what else yeah. i forgot i don't know what to say you see that you are limited in your English language in what you can present to God see that is the whole point the wisdom of God he gave us a language of his own so we can cover any area any area the Holy Ghost can go he will go and he goes anywhere so when you enter into the spirit is freedom for the Holy Ghost to tackle, tackle all kinds of problems you don't even know are there. That's, right. That's why we talk in tongues. That's why we pray in the spirit. For he that speaks in, in what? In unknown tongues, speak at mysteries. Yes. Mysteries to God. Yes. Mysterion. Oh, yes. a hidden secret. Yes. Uh, how can you talk English and, and talk hidden secrets? Yes. You can't. You talk, uh, for my father, I love you. Uh, 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 I adore you, and uh, uh, what else? What else can I say? Uh, you are good to me. <laughs> you are good to my my father. You are good to my mom. You are good. You are good. You are good to my dog too. Yeah, my dog. <laughs> and you are good to who? All right, you are good to the whole world. <laughs> Bless all the Indians, all the Africans. Bless all the Europeans. Bless all of them, Lord. 
<laughs> bless all the Greeks, bless all the Phoenicians. You see, it is, it is not specificity. Okay, but in, in the spirit, you, be, you must be specific. But who can be more specific than the Holy Ghost? He knows exactly. He made the spirit realm. Is he not God? Then you got God inside you. And God gave you a language. And you just go to church. All right, okay, okay, let's go to church. And then, and then, oh, and then the, the pastor preached. Oh, today, wow, today. Yes, God, it was so good. Why? Uh, the pastor preached. We talk tongues. What are you say? Uh, sla, la, la, la. Sla, 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 sla. <laughs> That's all they said. So you talk tongues, you say, sla, la, la. <laughs> what, 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 what? That's why I say, quite tanta insane. What great madness is that? You are given a complete language. And you go to church. Sla, la, 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 la. Sla, la, la. That's it. You talk tongues five minutes and you, you tell them devils will, 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 will flee away from you. When the Lord gave our sister, okay, Sister Diane, okay, gave her the message for her healing, what did she say? He said, Bless in the Holy Ghost, two, three, four, five hours. Bless in the Holy Ghost, talk in the Spirit. He said, talk in the spirit until you know that, yes, I have blasted in the Holy Ghost. Yeah. The spirit of God is the answer to most of our stuff, but we don't know how to walk in it. The spirit of God, brother, bless Holy Ghost. Pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. Don't, don't, don't play with it. You don't. Oh, my God. Look, look at hey. Have you ever been a murderer? No. A murderer? You ain't never been a murderer. All right, I know a man was a murderer. He was in the Bible, in the Bible. Amen. He killed God's children. Amen. You know him now? Yeah. He killed God's children. Yeah. Uh, God saved him. Yeah. God saved him. I ain't saving him. <laughs> I ain't saving a murderer who killed my children. Yeah. Hey, but God did. Yeah. Did God not save him? Yeah. And then God gave him Holy Ghost. Yeah. God gave him all the ghosts there is in the world. Yeah. What did Paul do with his ghost? <laughs> He said, I'm talking tongues more than you are. Are you hearing me now? Listen, if you want to know the value of praying in the spirit, look at the apostle Paul. Look at what, what Paul fought from his being in the letters he wrote. Look at the letter. This, this, this one man wrote half of the New Testament. Half of it came from the being of Paul. You, you all don't understand me? <laughs> Half of the New Testament flow from the very being of the Apostle Paul. Amen. And the Lord said, the Apostle Paul walked closer with me than all the other apostles. He said, he said when I brought the Lord's message, did I not read that and tell you? The Lord said, why, why did he say he talks in tongues more than you all? Didn't the Lord ask us in his message? Why did my servant Paul say I talk in tongues? I thank God. I talk in tongues more than he all. Where, came, where, where, where did the revelation come from? All the revelation. Well, what now? Now I'll come to visions and revelation. I knew of a man. Ah, beyond 13 years ago. Okay, whether in the spirit or in the flesh, I don't know. But I know that man was caught up in the third heaven. And he saw some stuff. That he said, now, nah, Paul, when you go down there, don't talk about it. It's too sacred. So this man is the one that I'll talk about. But of my own self, I ain't going to talk about it. Visions and revelations. Riches of the knowledge of Christ. Who, who, who brought them all out? You know, Paul? Mm -hmm. If anything you want to learn from Paul, that secret that he said is your secret too. I thank my God I have time to talk in tongues. I ha ah, ziba, za, 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 za. The, the difference between your, your nonchalant attitude and the fire of the Holy Ghost is that. Lack of the praying in the Holy Ghost. That is why you are yo-yo. That is why you are, you are, you are, you are unstable in your, in your faith, in your peace, in your love, in your joy. Why? They come from the Holy Ghost. They pour from the Holy Ghost into your being. Why not, why not just go talk to them some tongues? Uh, okay, I want to see if there will be some smart person among us. 
that, 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 who said, okay, as for me, I'm going to be smart. I know I don't know no God. So I'm going to do what Paul did. I'm going to blast Holy Ghost. I'm going to blast Holy Ghost and find out. Listen, blast Holy Ghost and find out for yourself. You can't depend on what I'm saying. Not because it's not true. Because I know it is true. And when you blast Holy Ghost, you come and say, wow, Robert, that's why you are crazy. This thing drives you crazy. <laughs> I'm crazy because I know it is real. Yeah. May God put fire in your bosom. Yeah. May the living God put fire of the Holy Ghost in your being yeah. and stir you up yeah. to rise up at midnight yeah. and blast some Holy Ghost. Yeah. At midnight, hour. I will arise. That's what David said. I'm going to arise and give thanks unto God because of his loving kindness. Yes, God. So, brethren, what time is this? Seven o'clock? What time? Oh, five to seven? <laughs> oh, ten. All right. Okay. It's ten o'clock. All right. So, let me close it and read Barclays and... and what I didn't finish, just one, one page, read it for you. But here, pray at all times, on every occasion, in every season, in the spirit, with all manner of prayer and entreaty. To the end, keep alert and watch with strong purpose and perseverance, interceding in behalf of all the saints of God, God, all, all the saints, God's consecrated people. That's the one way you can pray in the Holy Ghost for, for the people of God. Mm -hmm. You can pray in the Holy Ghost for the people of God. Because their needs are, 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 are just too many needs. Mm -hmm. And yet the master of the universe knows every need. Mm -hmm. And when you move in the spirit, you cover a lot for God. When you move in the spirit, you pray a lot for the whole world without you even knowing. Because mm -hmm. the spirit of God is the one who guides your prayer. Yeah. There's no selfishness in, in praying in tongues. Mm -hmm. But there's selfishness in English. Mm -hmm. Because all you think is, uh, is, is me, me, me. You can be talking about two, three hours and you ain't talking about yourself. You ain't talking nothing about yourself, but for somebody else. Somebody needs help and God put them on your heart. You don't even know them. Ah, when we go to heaven, we shall see so many people say, hey, brother, oh, hallelujah, and the Holy Ghost, and the Holy Ghost, what happened? Oh, the Lord made me see that when, when I came here, I saw that he was the one that was praying for me when the devils came to my house. Oh, yeah, ah, brother, oh, you see, a lot of miracles that, that happened that we don't know nothing about, but it will, it will go for us on our record, that God used us to bless multitudes when they were in danger, when they were in trouble. So I, I urge you, if you are going to have a breakthrough in your spiritual walk, start by praying the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Read the word of God for an hour, a day, or two hours. Okay, half well, for us, we read about two or three hours in the word. Because brother, the word is sweet. This word is sweet to yourself. Have you seen how sweet the word of God is? My goodness, sweeter than honey. You, your, your mother, body loves, loves barbecues. This is why I love honey stuff. <laughs> My soul loves the honey of the word. <laughs> ah, yes, God. <laughs> Ooh, yes, God. All right. Father God, I thank you. Let me just read this stuff. We we're, were dealing with the persecution that broke out, right? In the, in the, in the what? In the early church. How they were thrown to animals, thrown to, you know, you know, wolves and fire, all right? And then, and then they chewed them up, the animals, they were burned, mm -hmm. all right? And I read to you that aged man, the bishop of the, of the seven churches, one of them, Smyrna, yeah. the church in Smyrna, how Bishop Polycarp, that old man, oh my Lord, the old man was, was, was commanded to deny Jesus, okay, to believe Caesar, and deny Jesus. And that's what he says. Ah, yes, God. He says here, to have to suffer persecution was an opportunity to show one's loyalty to Jesus Christ. You see that? 
if you are called upon to, to, to suffer persecution, it's an honor given unto you because of Jesus. Okay, you are being called to stand for Christ. All right, okay, you go to church, I love you, sir. Lord, now it's okay, now, now prove your love. Prove your love to me in this tough uh, situation. Will you flee from me? Will you, will you be faithful to me? So to have to suffer persecution was an opportunity to show one's loyalty to Jesus Christ. One of the most famous of all the martyrs was Polycarp, the aged bishop of Smyrna. So when you read the message to Smyrna, understand. One of their leaders, Polycarp, Bishop Polycarp, his testimony when he was forced to deny Jesus. Okay, so he said, he said here, he was given the inevitable choice, sacrifice, okay, he said, no, the mob dragged him to the tribunal of the Roman magistrate. They dragged him. See, it was this kind of situation that Timothy was going through because you don't know when they will come and knock on your door and drag you out. So Timothy, you know, Paul says, I remember your tears. You remember, oh, second Timothy, your tears. And this is, hey, God hasn't given to you as a spirit of fear, but of power, of love and sound mind. Brother, stir up the gift of God that's inside you, brother. It's not time to weep, brother. But the, but the guy was afraid because he didn't know what time they would come for him. He said, bad, bad boy, bad boy, what you gonna do? <laughs> what you gonna do when they come for you? <laughs> okay, so Timothy was not a bad boy, but they were coming for him anyway. So he was weeping and crying. So Polycarp, he said, the mob dragged him to the tribunal of the Roman magistrate. He was given the inevitable choice, sacrifice to the Godhead of Caesar or die. Then it says, his, what he said has been immortalized in church history. Mm -hmm. What Polycarp said, he says here, Eight, eighty and six years came the immortal reply. Reply to sacrifice to Caesar mm -hmm. or die. Mm -hmm. He says, eighty and six years have I served Christ and he has done me no wrong. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. How can I blaspheme my king who saved me? So they brought him to the stake. They're going to hang him, pink, pink that, that thing, and then hang him on the stake. And then burn him like a sword, a, a pure sharp, this, and they, they, they put them on top. And then there's light fire under it. And you are roasted like an animal. He says here, ah, so they brought him to the stake and he prayed his last prayer. Oh Lord God Almighty, the father of, of thy well beloved and ever blessed son, by whom we have received the knowledge of thee, I thank thee that thou hast graciously thought me worthy of this day and of this hour. Ain't that something? Can you say that? <laughs> knowing that you're going to burn. But look at the honor and the, and the testimony he delivered. Pray and tell him, ah, yes, God, it is an honor given to me to suffer this day and this hour. Here was the supreme opportunity to demonstrate his loyalty to Jesus Christ. Ah, yes, God. He said, there are so many of us who have never in our lives made anything like a real sacrifice for Jesus Christ. The moment when Christianity seems likely to cost us something is the moment when it is open to us to demonstrate our loyalty to Jesus Christ in a way that all the world can see. I want to read again. The moment when Christianity seems likely to cost us something is the moment when it is open to us to demonstrate our loyalty to Jesus Christ in a way that all the world can see. To have to suffer persecution is, as Jesus himself said, the way to walk the same road as the prophets. 
and the saints and the martyrs have walked. To suffer for the right is to gain a share in a great succession. The man who has to suffer something for his faith can throw back his head and say, Hallelujah. Brothers, brothers, we are treading where the saints have trod. We are treading where the saints have trod. Now let me, you know he's talking about the prophets, right? All right, let me read something to you. Maybe you haven't read that in your Bible. I don't know what that is in your Bible. But I, 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 I know it's supposed to be in everybody's Bible. But your, your, your Bible, you don't have it. All right. <laughs> but here is what the Bible says. Ah, yes, God. Ooh, yes, God. Hebrews chapter 11. Ah, and what shall I say further? For time would fail me, verse 32. Time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David, and Samuel, and the prophets, who, by the help of faith, subdued kingdoms, administered justice, obtained promise, uh, promised blessings, and closed the mouth of lions, extinguished the power of raging fire, escaped the devourings of the sword, out of frailty and weakness, won strength and became stalwart, even mighty and resistless in battle, routing alien hosts. Some women received again their dead by a resurrection. Others were tortured. Uh -huh. Others were tortured to death with clubs, refusing to accept release, offered on the terms of denying their faith. Uh, so that they might be resurrected to a better life. Others had to suffer the trial of mocking and scourging and even chains and imprisonment. Ah, uh, they were stoned to death. They were lured with tempting offers to renounce their faith. They were sawn asunder. Ah, uh, you know that saw? You know saw? That's the carpenter saw. What did I he used to cut? Listen, they were sawn asunder. Mm. They used the saw to cut them in pieces. Jesus. Mm. Ah, so they were, so they were cut, the, yeah, they were sawn asunder, they were slaughtered by the sword. While they were alive, they had to go about wrapped in the skins of sheep and goats, utterly destitute, oppressed, cruelly treated, men of whom the world was, was not worthy. These men that were tortured, that were tormented, the word of God says, the world was not worthy of them. Ah, ah. Roaming over the desolate places and the mountains and living in caves and caverns and holes of the earth. And all of these, though they won divine approval by means of their faith, did not receive the fulfillment of what was promised. Because God had us in mind and had something better and greater in view for us. So that they, these heroes and heroines of faith, should not come to perfection apart from us before we could join them up there. Mm -hmm. This is what he says of the, uh, the saints. He says here, to have to suffer persecution is, as Jesus himself said, the way to walk the same road as the prophets and the saints and the martyrs have walked. To suffer for the right is to gain a share in a great succession. This is the succession of saints after saints after saints who was martyred because he will not deny Jesus. And you fall in line with them. So to suffer for the right is to gain a share in, in a great succession. The man who has to suffer something for his faith can throw back his head and say, brothers, we are treading where the saints have trod. Okay. When a man is called on to suffer something for his Christianity, that is always a crucial moment. 
It is the great occasion. It is the clash between the world and Christ. It is a moment in the drama of eternity. To have a share in such a moment is not a penalty. It's not punishment, but it is glory. <laughs> Ooh, you rejoice at such a moment, says Jesus. And be glad. The word for be glad is from the verb agaliastai. Agaliastai, which has been derived from two Greek words, which mean to leap exceedingly. Leap and leap higher. But they're going to kill me. Yes, leap higher. Rejoice. Ah, it is the joy which leaps for joy. As it has been put, it is the joy of the climber who has reached the summit and who, ha and who leaps for joy that the mountain path is conquered. Those who, who climb Mount Everest, have you seen that when they go to the, to the top, some die. Some die trying, but those who rise out of they stand on top of the world. Hallelujah. To suffer persecution is to make things easier for those who are to follow. You understand that? If you stand and you go through, don't you understand that your boldness and courage inspires others? What, what, what did Paul say? He said when he was in jail, he said there were people who were preaching Christ because of his b b bravery. But it is true, some were, were preaching out of envy, and others you know, were preaching because you know, they were true. But it don't matter. Whatever it is, they were preaching Christ. Okay? They were preaching Christ because of his boldness. His example encouraged them. How about if Paul had just, had just you know, I don't know, buckled under the pressure? Will the others be able to stand? No. So what are you going to do when yours come? Will you stand or will you collapse? There's persecution, but don't, don't collapse. Because there's honor and glory waiting for you. But let me tell you one thing that, that, that the Lord said. Because this is an area that I have thought you know, a, a lot about until the Lord said this. And that's oh yes, go all right, Lord, no problem. You you just <laughs> you just told me all the truth. He says, he says, he says he people hear something like uh, Stephen, who was being stoned alive, stoned, and others of his martyrs who were uh, you know who were killed and all this thing, the pain, the torture. He said, in those moments, I am close to them, and I do something to their bodies. So they are able to go through it rejoicing. <laughs> oh! I mean, <laughs> Jesus is love indeed. Jesus, he is with you. He is with you through it all. He ain't leaving you. It, was, it is because of him that you've come this far. That they are going to uh, not kill you. Would you think he will turn his back on you? Oh no, he's right there with you. He's right there with you. He said, I do something, I help. Now, now what happened to the uh, 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 Shadrach, Meshach, and the big Negro? A big Negro in the, in the fire. What happened to them? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Shadrach, Meshach, and the big Negro. <laughs> they were in the fire. <laughs> and then what did, they, what did they say? Hey. Did I know? Did we not put you not know, three people in, 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 in the fire? He said, yeah, my Lord, you did. But how come they are four? And the fourth one is like the Son of God. <laughs> the Son of God is in the fire with them. I said, the Son of God will be in the fire with you. In the name of Jesus. Your God will never forsake you. When the Lord, when the Lord gave us that hope, I said, yes, God. I said, when my time comes, yes, God. And <laughs> Lord, whatever it is, you know, brother, I want to go to heaven. Oh, yes, God, I want to go to heaven. If I have to go to heaven that route, fine. It's all right with me. I know my Lord will be there with me. Amen. Ah, says here. <laughs> 
to suffer persecution is to make things easier for those who are, who are to follow. Today, we enjoy the blessing of liberty because men in the past were willing to buy it for us at the cost of blood and sweat and tears. They made it easier for us. And by a steadfast and immovable witness for Christ, we may make it easier for others who are still to come. Ah, he said in the great Boulder Dam. Boulder Dam, where is it? Is it, is it in uh, uh, Colorado? Uh, in America? Uh, where? Okay, okay, all right. In the great Boulder Dam, uh, uh, Boulder Dam scheme in, uh, in America, men lost their lives in that project, which was to turn dust bowl into fertile land. When the scheme was, was, was completed, the names of those who had died were put on a tablet, and the tablets were put in the great wall of the dam. And on it was the inscription, These died that the desert might rejoice and blossom as the rose. Ain't that something? Would you let your life be like that? These died. Ah, they died. Ah. They died that the desert the desert might rejoice and blossom as the rose. The man who fights his battle for Christ will always make things easier for those who follow after. For them, there will be, there will be one less struggle to be encountered on the way. Still further, no man ever suffers persecution alone. If a man is called upon to bear material loss, the failure of friends, slander, loneliness, even the death of love. For his principles, he will not be left alone. Christ will be nearer to him than at any other time. The old story in Daniel tells how Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were thrown into the furnace, heated seven times, hot, because of their refusal to move from their loyalty to God. The courtiers watched. Did we not cast three men bound into the fire? They asked. Their reply was that it was indeed so. Then came the astonished answer. But I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire. And they are, they are not hurt. And the appearance of the fourth is like a son of the gods. <laughs> Woo! Yes, God. <laughs> he says here, yeah, as Browning, this is very interesting. Uh, Browning, a man called Browning, had it in Christmas Eve and Easter Day. That's a book. He said, this is what he said. I was born sickly, poor, and mean, a slave. No misery could screen the holders of the pearl of price from Caesar's envy. Therefore, twice I fought with beasts, and three times saw my children suffer by his law, by the law of, the, of, of Caesar. At last, my own release was earned. I released my own, de I, I, I received my departure. Me too, I'm going to have to be burned. At last, my own release was earned. I was some time in being burned. But at the close, I was some time in the fire, being burned. But at the close, a hand came through the fire above my head and drew my soul to Christ, whom now I see. Oh, Sergius, a brother, writes for me this testimony on the wall for me. I have forgotten it. When a man has to suffer something for his faith, that is the way to the closet, possible companionship, uh, to the closest possible com companionship with Christ. Mm -hmm. There remains only one question to ask. Why is this persecution so inevitable? It is inevitable because the church, listen to this, why we have to face it. Why we have to face is that when the righteous what, what, uh, uh, what rejoice, okay, what, or when the righteous are in power, what? 
The city rejoice. All right? When the righteous, the city rejoice, right? Okay, let's see this. But when the evil one, okay, you know, you know get power, people go for and hide. Okay, but listen to this. There remains only one question to ask. Why is this persecution so inevitable? It is inevitable because the church, when it, when it really is the church, is bound to be the conscience of the nation and the conscience of society. When the church is the church, that's what it develops into. The conscience of society. The conscience of the, of the whole nation. Because they stand for God. The church is the body of Christ. The very embodiment of Christ in his people. So what will it do? It will convict the nation, convict people's lives. But then, and you, you think when something like this takes place, the people will let you, uh, let you go free, convict them, mm -hmm. condemn them with your presence? Says here, ah, where, okay, uh, it's bound to be the conscience of the nation and the conscience of society. Where there is a good, uh, there is good, where there is good, the church must praise. Where there is evil, the church must condemn. And inevitably, men will try to silence the troublesome voice of conscience. Hallelujah! Men will try to silence that troublesome sense of the, or noise of the conscience. And the conscience that is the church in society, men will try to stifle it. Men, men, men hate God. They don't want God. Fallen man don't want God. And everything that will convict him and show him God, he will fight it. That is why the church is always persecuted. That is why it will happen wherever there is church. And especially a church that is alive. He says here, Ah, it is not the duty of the individual Individual Christian, all right, habitually to find fault, no, to criticize, no, to condemn, no. But it may well be that his every action is a silent condemnation of the unchristian lives of others. His, 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 you know, his, his, what, his simple life. Okay, is that, but it may be well that his every action is a silent condemnation of the unchristian lives of others. And he will not escape their hatred. He will not. You will not escape their hatred. If they have hated me, said Jesus, they will hate you too. Yes, so why are you surprised if the world hates you? If you talk in the Holy Ghost and they hate you. Why is that when you go to your job, they don't want you to say nothing about Jesus? <laughs> but listen, you don't have to go and talk Jesus. They live Jesus. I said, live Jesus. Yeah, yes, in, 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 your, in your own in your simple way, talk some Holy Ghost. Yes, Lord. <laughs> and pray for them. Yes, <laughs> Ooh, brother, pray for your, you see, believers, you are so, I don't know why. The people are dying. You are walking in the midst of hell on your job. They are dying. You don't know Jesus. And you don't pray for them. You don't have the burden to intercede in the Holy Ghost for them. That's the problem. He says here, it is not likely that death, it is not likely that death awaits us because of our loyalty to the Christian faith. It's not likely because of, our, uh, of our, uh, the Christian faith, so death is waiting for us. No, it's not likely. But insult awaits the man who insists on Christian honor. You hear that? Insult. They, they will insult you. They will say, oh, man, is evil against you. Because of your, of, your, of your conduct as a, as a believer. Mockery awaits the man who practices Christian love and Christian forgiveness. Actual persecution may well await the Christian in your businesses, in industry, who insist on doing an honest day's work. Okay, there are all kinds of stuff that go through uh, what in America, American business, that the unions. If you are a, a Christian in the union and you want to do what is right, you, you don't go the way they want it, ah, brother, you are in trouble. Right, <laughs> Ooh, yes, God. Christ still needs his witnesses. 
He needs those who are prepared, not so much to die for him, as to live for him. The Christian struggle and the Christian glory still exists. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo. What, what I'll be doing as of next week, because today is the last day of the conference, but next week, uh, as we meet online, another dimension of why, if I were a devil, okay, I would attack you. <laughs> Especially when I understand that Jesus calls you two things. Jesus described who you are before me, and I, the devil, I see that, what, okay, this is what they're going to do me. <laughs> Jesus said, ye are the salt of the earth. Right? Yeah. All right. And what does salt do? You think the devil is going to sit down and let you be salt? No. With all that happens, all the work that salt does. Mm -hmm. And I'm a devil and let your salt come and mess up my, <laughs> my kingdom. And say, say here, ye are the light of the world. All right, so I should sit down there and let you be light in my kingdom. I'll blast you. I'll fight you. So the persecution will come from these two angles. Being salt and being the light. Okay, so I didn't have, I was coming to just do the salt part with the what I've just finished reading. But then I went to the Bible. All right, so the Bible is all right. We always go to the Bible and, then, and get some Holy Ghost. But brethren, I love you all. It's been a joy. It's been very intense. Yeah. But the battle is not over. Mm -hmm. The battle has just begun. Mm -hmm. You have stirred up them devils. Yeah. You stirred up your soul. You stirred up them devils too. Because mm -hmm. they heard everything that was preached here. Mm -hmm. And they're going to find out, all right, who, who is going to live that kind of life here before us? Mm -hmm. Can he do that? We ain't going to allow him to do that. Mm -hmm. Them devils are going to fight. Yeah. They are devils. And they'll always be devils. So you should be believers. The believers are going to fight. They are believers and they will live the life. Let us live the life. Right? And face them devils head on. And Jesus Christ will make us more than conquerors. I pray for each one of you. I pray that the Lord my God who sent me in your midst. Will sustain you. Will continue to cause this word to burn in your heart. Because the Lord said, what I'm teaching them is exactly what needs to be taught. I told you in the message that I read to you. That's what must be taught. So you are receiving the truth. Ain't no, ain't no, ain't no messy truth. This is truth. This is real. From the heart of God. From the Holy Ghost. So abide in it. Stay focused on it. If I were you, I will go and get the, the messages of, 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 the, of the eight days. And listen to them. And listen to them. You know Kenneth Hagin? Kenneth Hagin he used to show something. He says when he was, he was learning and rising up, okay, some men, some men of God that, you know, he honored them, okay, they would, he would go and get their tapes and then go and hide in the desert somewhere and listen to it. He said, listen. He said, I, I heard them, but what they preach is not mine yet. It's not mine until it permeates my being. Are you hearing me now? Amen. How many, you, you guys, how many words has God brought to us here? Oh. How many words have we heard online? Yes. Do you remember any of them? Oh. Mm -hmm. But if I, if I was you, I will go and get them all. Mm -hmm. Okay? And instead of eating some barbecue dinners in the Christmas season, <laughs> I'm going to find a place all right, to go and hide. And then listen to them over and over and over until it permeates your being. Yes. And your thought mind, your mind, your thinking mind is transformed. Why is it that when Paul heard the God, was born again, he had to go into the desert? To go and stay in Arabia, far away. So he could ask God, God, what happened to me? <laughs> God, what happened? Why did you blind me? What is the meaning of that? Oh, God, reveal yourself to me. We have come here. God has brought this word. Yeah. Now, what are, are you going to let God sit still? Go to him and say, Lord, I want this word open up in my soul. I want the word that came this week 
And last week, I want it, I want it to burn in my being. Yes, Do your job Amen. by going to God and wait upon him Amen. and listen to the messages. I charge you in Jesus' name that you will honor God. Open your being to God and let God have glory in your life. Yeah. May God bless each one of you. May your Father God bless you. You are my brethren. We are a family. And the Lord Jesus Christ sent me in your midst yeah. to come and encourage my brothers. Yeah. If you knew how much God loved you, if you knew what he tells about his children, how they are suffering and ministers that are not faithful to him, he tells us to be faithful to his children, to love them. How many times has God spoken to you about what he told Peter? Peter, do you love me? Peter, do you say, I asked him three times. Because it takes love to go and minister to my people. It takes love to be a minister of God. To care about the people. To take good care of them. Because I love them. They are mine. They are mine. Hey, let me tell you some, some, some testimony I heard. My sister you know, to, to, told me a, a testimony. He says, uh, you, you, those of you who play with your, with your tithes and offerings, listen to this. Okay? This woman was not very faithful in tithes and offerings. All right, she was she will pass, you know, she'll pay some and do some and uh, but not consistently. Okay? But I told you the church of Prophet uh, uh Prophet Angie, okay, uh, Prophet uh, Richard, okay, and the apostle that, that are the head of that church in the uh, truth to heaven. That's the church, truth to heaven. Mm -hmm. Find that, find that, but well, the reason why I don't like it is simply because they talk they talk in their Ghan Ghanaian language. I don't like that. I said, Lord, why, why don't you take somebody who will talk in English when he come back? But they talk in the Ghanaian language. So you don't hear them. I hear everything, everything they talk. But I wish all of you would have direct access to listen to what, 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 what that church stands for. Whenever they, uh, yearly, every year they do a conference. Right? And the Lord pays them a visit. Every year, the Lord pays them a visit in the, in the, in, in the congregation. The Lord comes there okay, because he reveals himself to the prophet. And after that, the prophet will, know, will tell them, the, 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 the apostle will call the prophet, uh, what did the Lord you know, you know, say? He said, the Lord came. For this very December, this very December, what happened? He said, the Lord came okay, and he went to the offering, the place they, the, the, that they put their offering. Because he said, the Lord went and stood there, all right, and told the prophet, I'm putting, I'm putting uh, a shield around your offering, a shield of, of protection. Whoever will honor me, I will honor them. Hear that? Whoever will honor me, understand that you should honor me with your tithes and your offering. I will also pro you know, protect them from the devouring of the enemy. You see that? And then the, there was a story of one lady. She said, a lady that attends the church. Okay, he says, uh, what happened was that uh, she died. Okay, but the, he, he, he didn't say the, the name. She, she died and the Lord had a covenant. The Lord has a covenant with that church. I never heard that before. He has a covenant for that church and told them, whatever I have revealed to you all, if you all will listen and obey, or obey, all right, it will be easier for all of you here to come home to heaven. But have I not told you what? what I, maybe you all you, don't understand. You think me, me, I'm, I'm, I'm playing some Boogaloo games. All right? The Lord has said, because we are praying, Lord, when will, when will you take us also to go to heaven? When, when do you have, you know? So we pray and ask, oh, Lord, show us mercy. Okay? But then one day the Lord spoke to us. He said, listen, I will take you, okay, if I want to. But the very things I'm going to show you in heaven, as I bring them to show them, I myself come to you every night to come and talk to you about it. So what do you want to come there for? <laughs> so you all don't, you don't think the messages I, I bring come from the Lord's mouth? Okay, so when, when we say when this woman died, okay, the devil was fighting over, the, over her, you know, her spirit. He said, no, she belongs to me. 
And the angel said, no. The angel said, no, no, no. It belongs to the Lord. He said, no, he ain't paying no tithes. He ain't paying tithes for. <laughs> so, it, so she belongs to, to the devil. Wow. And so the Lord just overruled. Wow. And by mercy, he said, to the devil, she smiled. Now listen to what the Lord said. I have a covenant with that church where she comes from. And I cannot let you take her. Ain't that something? <laughs> Do you understand how important it is to be in a good church? You think we're playing games here? We ain't playing no games here. Live right. And the Lord will allow you to come to heaven. Okay, honor him. What the Lord has given to us, honor, obey, live it. He wants humility, he wants love, he wants obedience, he wants submission, he wants honor, he wants holiness. He's told you holiness. All right, he's told you holiness within and without. He said, nothing in this world should be used to beautify yourself. My holiness, my righteousness, my truth, my character. So I honor, I raise up my children on my own nature and character. Are you hearing me now? Amen. So you, what is the Lord's character? The fruit of the Spirit. Yes. So all nine fruit of the Spirit must be ready, not growing in you. Yes. And none of them, the, what, 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 the, the, the works of the flesh, should ever abide in you. Mm -hmm. Right? So I pray you, brethren, the Lord has been so merciful to us. Yes. I don't know. I don't know how the Lord chose us. Where do I come from? I was an atheist. I didn't want to know God. And the mercy of God came to me. And now God pays us visit. Now who will listen to me? Who will understand that, that this is real? Are you hearing me? And he's given us messages to bring to his children from his own mouth. Thank you, Lord. Brother, wake up and obey him. Yes. Live right. Follow him. Live for him. And the Lord will not disappoint you. Okay? He's teaching us how to come to heaven. He's teaching us what he wants to see in our lives. So that when we leave this body, we will not have to go to the other side. Will come home straight. We belong to heaven. So please, this church, don't, don't contaminate this church. Don't do things that God hates. All those of you online, you want to be part of us and join us online, fine, wonderful. But be faithful to God. All right? Be holy, be kind, be truthful, because God is monitoring you as he monitors us here. You are part of us. As long as you are coming, you are part of us. You are part of the, of, of the brethren in Michigan, as God calls us. The brethren in Michigan. So brethren, our God is faithful. Our God will, who has begun this good work, he will see you through. He will take you through. I tell you, there has to be some joy in your soul. That at least I know that with God behind me, I will make it. I will make it to heaven. By the mercy of God, yes. be faithful. Honor God in your life, yes. and God will not fail you. Amen. Father God, we thank you. I give you all the glory, yes. all the honor yes. for what you have ac accomplished here. These eight days, oh God, my King. Uh, Father, who alone could do it? You alone could have done what you've done. And I give you all the glory and honor and praise because you are true. You said you bless your people. And Father, you have blessed us. You have opened your being to us. We have heard words that we never heard before from your being. Oh God, my King, may your love continue to lift us up. May you continue, God, to raise us up, to draw us closer. May you, you continue to feed us. Feed us with the word of God. And Lord, Guide us in the way of salvation. Yes, and when it's all over, bring us home. Bring us home to where you are. Yes. Father, I thank you for my brethren. I thank you for all, all, all those online. I thank you, oh God, Father, their faithfulness is amazing. 
The Lord, they can stay online for two, three hours, four hours. Father God, it blows my mind. But you are the doer of it. You are the one who alone can orchestrate this. So I thank you that your eyes are upon your people. Your eyes are upon all those who are online. Heal them, preserve them, and strengthen them. And make them your servants indeed. In the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father God. I praise you, Father God. We give you all the glory for what you've accomplished. Now, Father, as we live here, Lord, we don't leave your presence. We'll continue to be with you on Sundays. Ah, Father God, what a mighty God we serve. So bless your, your, your servant, Pastor Fields, and Lord, bro, Brother Duane. Oh, Lord, as their faithfulness they stand in the name of Jesus Christ. And bless all those, oh God, who are part of this, of this little church that nobody cares about. And yet I know God cares about. I know heaven's eyes is upon you. And one day you shall see the multitudes come in. Yeah. I say one day. This is a foundation. This is a foundation. The multitudes will come when the foundation is, 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 is set. So be faithful. My God, give them grace to be faithful. My God, pour your Holy Ghost upon them so they will be faithful and continue to walk with you. This I ask with all other blessings in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. I give the Lord a clap offering. Pastor Fields is over to you.